Hello everybody, welcome to another Photoshop CS6 tutorial. Buddy Blackford here, and I'm gonna teach you about how to use the clone stamp tool. Now the clone stamp tool allows you to sample a part of an image and then apply that sample somewhere else on the same image, or even if you want to, on another document. Now for example, what that means is, so say I wanna take this button right here, and apply it right here and here and here in between the other buttons to add more buttons to the shirt. Well, you can do that using the clone stamp tool. It basically just copies that button and puts it and you can put it wherever you want. The clone stamp tool can also be used to repair images or get rid of things such as scratches and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go over some of the ways to use clone stamp tool using this image. So let's start by zooming in a little bit so we can see what's going on. So I'm going to zoom in on these buttons. And uh, this is pretty good. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're using the clone stamp tool, it's going to take this exact image. Now if you look at the shirt, you can see that this button right here is definitely brighter than this button down here. So when you try to like add it, it's going to look stupid. Anyways, I'll show you. So the first thing we need to do is select like an area for our clone stamp tool to sample from. And the way you do that is by holding down Alt on your keyboard and it turns into like a little crosshair here and then that way you can pick your sample area. So I'm just going to pick this button right here. Actually, I'm going to pick the top button so we can show you the, what I'm talking about with the uh, lighting and everything like that. So just hold down the Alt button and click and it'll have the area sample for you and you can see that now it turns into a button. The next thing you need to do is come up to your um, brush and pick your brush, pick a size, and make sure that your hardness is up at 100% if you want the whole entire button to show. If you move the hardness down, for example I'll move it down to zero, the button looks faded and blends in more with the actual image instead of standing out as its own button. So here it is at um, 100 percent and you can see it's way more defined. So that's how you do that. You can increase your brush size as well to get more of the sample area. So that's how that works. I'm uh, gonna lower my brush size back to Let's see somewhere around just so that the the button is showing so about this I got 20 pixels here so all you need to do now is click and it'll place the button and you can see there it has placed the extra button in the area now what I was talking about earlier with the lighting and everything let me go place this button down here next to this one now, obviously that doesn't look right it doesn't look like it belongs so what you need to do is just sample one of these other buttons near it and put that down there like that. And now it looks like it actually belongs in the picture. Now, um, something, some other things I'd like to uh, show you um, have to deal with this uh, top menu bar up here with the different ways that we can use our um, clone stamp tool. Okay, we've got our different blending modes here to show how the clone stamp tool that you or the stamp that you put down blends in with the other um, or blends in with the original image. Now if you don't know about blending modes and what they do check out my tutorials on blending modes it's a like a three or four part tutor tutorial where I explain each one in depth and show you in pictures how they work. We've got our opacity here which obviously um, uh, toggles the transparency of what you're putting down. So um, if I go down to zero, it's pretty much I put it. I uh, click there to put down my clone or to put down my stamp, and nothing happened because the trans opacity was at well, it's at one percent. You can't even see it. If I put it at fifty around fifty percent, and I click, you can see that it barely shows up. So I'm gonna go undo those moves so I don't have a bunch of uh, random buttons hiding in the background there. The next button that I want to uh, go over is this align button here. Now what the align button does 
is allows you to keep sampling from the same point um, but it won't give you the same exact image when you're trying to put it down so we'll take uh, for example let me take a sample of this button now we have this button and every time I put this down the button is going to show up as the same button every time now let me uh, click on aligned here and then I sample this button now I set this button down and now the image is going the same so the button here is the same exact point here but as I move away from the uh, button that I set down it's also picking up the same distance away from the original button so if I move over a little bit you're gonna be able to see this little seam and there's the seam right there and if I start painting you'll be able to see the seam and what I'm talking about so you can also hold down when you're doing this so that's what the aligned button does now I forgot to mention it earlier but if you're using a Mac the um, option key is what you're going to hold down instead of the alt key on the Windows platform just remember that alt and option are interchangeable with the Mac and Windows platforms so now I want to show you like another way to use this and that'd be like cleaning up like scratches or anything in there so I saw this table in the back that has this line going through it and your client wants you to make it just one table so nothing it's not all like coming through so what I'm gonna do is make sure aligned is on and I'm going to sample the table and then all I'm gonna do is hover over top of it and just start dragging and you can see it goes way too far I need to back up and I need to sample up here closer to the top get get the uh, edges aligned now I can start dragging and now see next to my cursor you can see a little plus sign that's where you're sampling from and now I'm just gonna have to lower my brush size down a little bit and get this little area here let's see if I can get it so it looks somewhat decent back up a little uh, let me back up here a little bit more so now you can see that the table has been somewhat fixed now we're gonna have to add some like maybe some blur to it so it uh, blends in a little bit better there we go and now you've got a table that has been made just one and you can kinda see how um, I might have to blur this a little more to get a better effect looking so it doesn't look like there's a painted streak in there but just mess with that and for the most part when you're working with stuff in the background everybody's gonna be focusing on the focal point of the image and they're not gonna notice that kind of stuff in the background so just uh, keep that in mind when you're working with it and you don't have to worry too much about uh, blurring as much if you have something in the background now if I was to do something like that right in the foreground you want to get it as perfect looking as you can and uh, that's just a tip that I've learned from working on um, lots of professional projects and movies and things like that where um, they're just gonna be focused on the front so that's a basic introduction of the clone stamp tool and how you would use it in like a real image so take that knowledge and then um, I'll be doing a more advanced clone stamp tool um, tutorial later on that shows you how to use different options and use different source points and things like that which will be uh, which will make more sense when I get into the actual tutorial so thanks for watching this one and keep um, keep up with the tutorials to figure out when the next uh, clone stamp tool advanced tutorial is coming up so thanks a lot and have a good day everybody